everybody. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. It's been a while, and it's it's Lewis's fault. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, he was away on vacation, and he had to, like, go do some skiing or something. I don't know. I prefer what, you know Lewis's what Lewis to blame. Is like. Rather than it's Lewis's fault. It's all Lewis's well, you'd fault. Rather, you'd rather be blamed than, than be at fault. Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah. difference? I don't know. I just like hearing the word and and Lewis is to blame. I just like that. <laughs> My ass hurts okay. and Lewis is to blame. Lewis is to blame. I think it sounds less childish than it's so-and-so's fault. Like if you say it's his fault, it sounds like something my father would say. It does. It's like he, he did it. It wasn't me. It it's all him. down to Lewis. Yeah. Lewis, Lewis cucked us for like two weeks. <laughs> First in uh, Vancouver. And then with the podcast. How was Vancouver? Talk it oh, up. Have you guys ever, ever experienced the joys of uh, business class air travel? Or, I have. My goodness. One time. Uh, yeah. One time for me as well. Just once. I'm... Well, I, I say once. It was there and back. Whoa. It was the same. Yeah. The first bit. time I've ever been business and it was... Or anything other than, than premium economy, which I think is pretty premium usually. Um, very no premium. more. No but more no, do I, you think it premium. Y- you got to get was, on Hat Films' level, man. Like, they travel business everywhere I they go. I know they do. Six, I don't even know crazy. how they manage to do it. Like, they're not even, like, that big or anything. They're just, it's like... It's like their kind of um, retainer or whatever. It's like yeah, on, I guess their, so. it's on yeah. their show runner. What's it called? I Pflex, think they when, say like, metal bands have a yeah. wave our fee, but just upgrade us to business class. So that rider. that's pretty much all they want. A rider, a rider. That's what it is, and I guess that works makes sense because it's they're riding on the plane. So no, it's it was it was great. We went to the plane got delayed for five hours. We went to Whistler. They swapped the plane out for a bigger plane, nice. and um, there were not enough seats in premium economy, so we all got upgraded to business. We were all sitting in different places, which was great because I didn't have to sit with Duncan and Chin for the whole time. And I got about four hours sleep, which was absolutely heavenly, because then when we got to Whistler, up at the top of the uh, mountains in Canada, we woke up really early because of jet lag, and we went straight out, and we skied, and it was it was glorious. It was great. Nice. Enjoyed you guys it. finally went on your skiing trip, the one that like Shin has been talking about for three years. Solid. That's exactly right. We finally, finally did it. managed to get out onto slopes for two days, and Duncan, poor old Duncan, he couldn't couldn't never been before right and just spent the whole time falling on his ass i've got this glorious picture on my phone of him did you have face planting. did you have sore legs after you were done skiing and snowboarding i didn't actually because i've had i've uh, been going to the old um gym oh, and so of course looking, looking yeah, after gym Roo, yeah so i went God. to the gym yesterday saw my personal trainer i got right. a little story got a little story oh, about oh, it Jesus. okay let's hear it um here it comes so Basically, you know, go in there and um, I get there like, you know, normally normal time, nine o'clock. And uh, did you just walk in and you say, hey, what's up, dick face? I'm back from my 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 vacation that I it was a really lavish one, too. I bet you've never been on one of those. Is that like your opening thing uh, to him? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Just like uh, just I was a just really trying to cocky, think of like the most inappropriate thing you could say to the him really and, cocky, like nod and wink. You know, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. And yeah. of course, he's chatting away with this young-looking blonde um, girl in a, in a tight tracksuit or whatever. Right. And I was like, okay. And so then, um, <laughs> so then we start working out and stuff. And he yeah. says, um, he says, oh, I, I, I really, I tore one of my glutes. <laughs> right. Wow. Did did How? he request that you rub his glute better? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, oh. And then. Um, did you have to massage his his torn glute? So I said, "Did you get that from all the gay sex?" You did not. Yeah, I did. You fucking you did. did not. There's no <laughs> fucking way you did. I did. No, you didn't. Uh, okay. There's no way you said You're that. You're a functioning human being, Lewis. I don't believe this story right off the bat. Now, yeah. What had happened at like five minutes before that? This was... uh, sounds so outlandish. You have to like you, you honestly. You have to record it to prove it now. This is yeah. genuinely true. At all. And then what happened five minutes before that was um, he a woman had like approached us okay like like way too old to look like she's be in the gym um, and she was like so so like a, a blonde woman wearing like a, a sort of baggy tracksuit and she she said do you know anything about hands to my to my to my trainer to, hands? to David yeah and David was like what do you mean and she said well I've got this lump on my hand. And it really hurts when I lift weights and stuff. And he was like, oh, well, you might have fractured your little bone in your wrist. You need to be careful with that. So go and have a go and have an X-ray. And she was like, OK, thanks for the thanks for the tip. And she it's went probably off. a tendon. So so when I when I said to him, um, you know, is that from all the gay sex you've been having after he told me about his, his torn butt muscle? Yeah. Um, he said, I have a girlfriend, you know. 
you met her earlier. And I said, you're going out with that old woman. <laughs> you There's no fucking way. This is, all, this is all in your fucking dreams, man. There's no way you said this stuff to this guy. Like, you and don't even know him. How many I'm, times have you been in the gym now? Let's, can we get, uh, like, what, four? Five times, maybe? I've been, like, you're what? Not, no, you're, like, not on, like, you're not on terms with this guy where you can say this shit to him. We are now fine. We are now fine. He cracked a smile. And he was like, no, the girl earlier. And then we had a little laugh about it. And it was fine. It was fine. It right. was actually fine. Okay. Okay? God damn. You know how he tore a glute? Because when, when he's been working with you, he has to go and work out so fucking hard to get all his anger out. To yeah, work right. With the next <laughs> he's tearing glutes. He probably fucking strangles his girlfriend like every goddamn day and then oh. screams your name at the same time. He, he asked, she asked for that, though. So it's fine. That's the nice. thing. You know, getting... Don't ever do that, by the way. I think that's really dangerous. I see. What? I see this though. What, what? Tear your butt, butt muscle. No choking, like your girlfriend. <laughs> oh, Jeez, right, it's like, of course. I saw yeah. this. I, I, I was. Saw, I saw this whole string of like memes about um, on Imager, and it was just all of it was just about like women saying choke me and stuff. I was like, Jesus, do people don't just okay <laughs> do whatever you want in your own bedrooms, but be careful out there folks like, the thing is you know, know what you shouldn't do whatever you want in your own bedroom because what if you wanted to murder someone don't do that don't do anything exactly. against You're the not, law in you your own shouldn't. bedroom you shouldn't really yeah, don't murder do that. people and don't choke them don't, don't choke them that's really personal i think if you are going to murder someone shoot them from like 300 meters away or something like don't fucking choke them or stab them that's even worse that's yeah. messy <laughs> like Man, just like, just get a sniper rifle or a hunting rifle or something and do it that way. Oh, God, you can imagine. I mean, if I was going to get killed, I'd want it to be from a mile away. I don't even see it oh, coming. God. Just my head just snaps and it's all over. Rather than someone up close can smell their Man. breath as they're hunched over me, strangling the life out of me. It fucking sucks. If I'm, if I'm going to go, I just want to be vaporized. Like, vaporized? I, I don't even want to know where it comes from. I want it to be like instantaneous. I don't want there to be any chance that I'm going to survive with like... You want to be vaped. I want to be vaped. Vaped? I want to just... I can do it. I want to disappear into a cloud instantly. I don't want any like residual like, oh, he made it somehow, but... He's, he, he can't use his arms or his legs ever again or anything like that. I don't want that shit. Like, I just, yeah. when I go, I want to go. I want to go big. You don't want to come around and be in, in, a, in a barrel. Yeah. Just a man that lives in a barrel full of, full yeah. of liquid. Yeah, yeah. Not a, not a glass yeah. jar. They couldn't get a jar. They're like, there's too much of you left to fit in all the jars we've got. So we had to go with a wooden barrel. With no windows, you just live in oh, there. Man, now. Same, same with like a really bad crash. Like if you were in a plane and it crashed in the ocean or like somewhere in the middle of nowhere, vaporize me at that point. I do not want to be, I do not want to survive that because that is even worse, I think, than than dying. Like, you know, fucking having to like hold on to a, a piece of the, the wing and float to shore over the course of two weeks or something like that, you know, in shark infested waters and it gets dark and cold in the Atlantic Ocean or or the Pacific, I guess. You know what I mean? Like mm, yeah. I'm not that survivor. I that's not me. Just 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 vaporize me every time, okay? I don't want to like black out in fear or anything like that. I just want to be vaporized. That's all you can hope for, I think. I was reading about this girl that fell two kilometers. Her plane broke up in midair. They were flying over the Amazon jungle. This right. is a true story. You can look this up. And it was made into a shitty movie, I believe. The plane no. breaks up and crashes. There's like 87 people on board. 86 of them die. Her, she's in her seat, plummeting towards the jungle canopy in her seat. Obviously, thinking, "Well, this is this is it. I mean, this sucks." There's the, no the, way she was uh, she was she canopy, was conscious for the, the whole thing. The jungle canopy right? broke her fall, and I mean, I you know when people say you black out, I, I would be yeah. so terrified. I think I'd probably stay awake for that. I think I mean, not everyone has a Sipsian re reaction to to danger where you just faint. I think a lot right. of people would just be going, ah, the whole way. And when you know, there, there's a video know, man, of that man, your, guy who's parachuting. Your brain is crazy, okay? Your brain does some weird stuff. And part of your brain's way of coping is to just sometimes cause you to black out. Is the like, reason just that you that. black out because you're being choked by something? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that you're getting choked during a, tw a two kilometer drop from a plane that's just broken up in midair that's just a waste uh, of time whoever's choking you 
Like, I mean, you're clearly going to die. Is. Like, I think, I think you got bigger fish to fry at that point. It's like someone on fire being eaten by a shark and you're there just choking him as well. Just to but make you, sure. On oh. the way down, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I might as well just quickly have get, get myself off, you know, and you start choking yourself and like There's wanking. no way people think that. Like, no. that's the last thing on your mind. You're anyway, not feeling sexy at that point when she, you're she faced with She crashes into the, the jungle canopy. Does she like, hang on a second? Let's just carry on this. So she doesn't undo the seatbelt. She just thinks well, I'm well, going to no, stick it. I mean, for one and thing. She's like fucking paralyzed with fear. Of course yeah. she doesn't undo the seatbelt. She's in the in the position, the crash crash position, you know, like when you put your hands. When she left the plane, I'm sure the fastening your seatbelt's light was on, right? In, until she sees that light come off, that seatbelt stays on. Or until she How lands. How does a plane break up in midair, though? What it is just that? Like just did. too just much fucking, turbulence or I don't something? Know. Do you think she like takes a cheeky vape or something as well? She's like, oh, well, you know, I'm outside now. There's not going to be any plane... I can, I can finally have she's a quick She's in free fight. fall, Lewis. She's in free Man, she's fall. Scre- like, she's like screaming her head off. Like, is she though, though? Or is she of like, course okay, she I'm fucking now, I'm resigned is. to it. And she's like, maybe the reason she survived was because she did choke herself off, had time to like get relaxed. <laughs> she, she She like vaped a bit and then she, she like loosened did. up. And then what, when she, she just, when she fell, she was really loose, and so she just bounced. Man, it's not, it's not a fucking episode of Roadrunner where he's falling <laughs> down and he busts out the picnic basket and... You know, plays the violin and stuff. Like she crashes she's just screaming into the jungle the canopy. Time. Yeah, she's terrified. But the the jungle canopy breaks her fall, so she lands. Right. She starts she starts walking, and she realizes. So hang that, on a second. Is she stuck in a tree? No, no, no. It just crashes through. So she's on right. the, the floor of the jungle now. She's kind of injured. She's fucked up her arm. She's Jesus. crushed like a. She she like landed on a fucking bunch of monkeys or something. In shit. the fucking rainforest. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. So no she get, way. She gets up and she she finds the river and she realizes yep. she she knows okay rivers flow down to the sea. Right. I'm sure there's some people living by the sea at the end of this river or maybe I'll see someone along the way. Yeah. So she just starts floating down the river like she she just what? floats in the, in the fucking rainforest. No, no. You float yeah, yeah. down she's a river. In, she's in Hell the no. There's piranhas in yeah, there. Exactly. You don't do that. She had she had no choice. And with a fucked up arm too. Was she yeah. bleeding? She was. Oh, it was for- getting very bad. It was there was maggots in it and everything like that. Was she oh, like choking oh, herself as well? So she's and she's, stuff. she's getting the, she's constantly being bothered by a, a small Lebanese child who'd also crashed with her, who kept yeah, choking her c- and badgering about her about masturbating sex. when she yeah for some reason. I, it's just but like somehow she made with it. Masturbation. Right? So she's she right. floats well, she's down using the, the river. airplane seat as some sort of surrogate canoe, and yeah. I don't know. They interview her after the fact, and they say, "What's the worst part of your whole ordeal?" <laughs> she's like, "You know what." I could just about handle the broken arm and the free fall for two kilometers with the canopy breaking my fall and the piranha infested river and, and everything. The maggots in but my there arm. was this really fucking annoying guy badgering me to start masturbating the whole time <laughs> I was surviving. That was the worst part. That was just, she, she's vaping as she goes down the river like a sort of old steamer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like one of those gambling chips. <laughs> I'm aboard. We got poker. <laughs> oh, man. So she finally gets to this this wood shack that was sort of used for some some logging or something in the Amazon, but it was abandoned. So she goes for in there cocaine and she, production. <laughs> cocaine production. <laughs> 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 she stumbles across a cartel cocaine plant. Oh, but man. yeah, they rescued her and she lived. It was fucking nuts. Fuck me, man. I, like we're joking, but holy shit! Yeah, like crazy. I hope I hope that woman is not listening to us. I don't talk think she about is. her right now because that's really. If you really are well done, that was really impressive. Yes. Yeah, you did a good job there. And fucking they saved good. her arm. And they really saved good. her arm, by the way. Not sure about the logic behind getting in the river, but still. Well, she did. You know, she had to go past good. all the alligators and all that shit. But what oh, else, I don't know what else. Shit. What other choice she had? Imagine just having to you're... walk through the Amazon, dude. You'd oh, never make man. it. No, no. There's no way. I would just. I would. I would hope that I landed in a tree and I'd stay up in the tree and I'd wait for like some people to come by. You know, like you know, some intrepid explorers or whatever, and I'd call down. I'd say hey hey help me my, my plane broke up and the canopy broke my fall i've been up here for a year i need some help or <laughs> and that's how i would get out of the, get out of the i'd be dead man i i wouldn't even start walking like i would be so fucking scared of like everything that happened and everything that was ahead of me as well honestly i think i would have died midair though i would have blacked out and died probably oh my god probably so, we, so everyone in vancouver <laughs> was like smoking weed, right? Yeah. Just so you know. Duncan was obviously vaping. Everyone was vaping. Smith got a vape pen given to him by a guy who was like marketing a new series of vape pens and had this brand new, like really trendy looking vape pen. Now you were thinking about getting a vape pen, weren't you, Sips? Yeah. 
I want to get the one Smith's got because you said that he was high the whole time. Well, here's the thing, right? So Smith's vape pen had like whatever whatever weed liquid you get that Li- stuff in liquid it, right? weed yeah i don't know like thc i don't know what it is but it, it was full of that and um obviously they couldn't like take it home or anything so they were feeling like oh better get better get some better get better use this up while we're here Jeez. i don't know how much to tell like about how phil's i don't know i don't know how much to tell about this because i don't know how comfortable oh fuck it i'm just gonna tell what happened um, <laughs> he's in so, that so they blew each other it happen they got high and they started blowing each other everywhere. So, no, <laughs> not really. They, 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 not really. I mean, Duncan was vaping away anyway, right? And there was right. this one point where um, we were talking about it and Duncan said, literally verbatim, he said, I vaped on a kid earlier and it was good. <laughs> that was, <laughs> what does right. that mean? Well, uh, yes. it was basically, I think he was just vaping in the, you know, f- releasing some extremely, ripping some fat clouds in the middle of, Vancouver. Right. I think a child just walked through a big strawberry cloud. <laughs> nice. Um, and J- Duncan felt bad for a second and then like, in- noticed that the kid actually quite enjoyed it. So yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Vancouver, full of people smoking weed everywhere. Weed is, seems like it's about to be legal. So it, Well, Smith, it is. Like in Canada next year, it's going to be like all over the country apparently. So, so I, don't, I guess people are just I'm not a getting, huge, getting ready. Huge knowledgeable weed guy right that's not my right. forte i don't okay. smoke a lot of weed i don't kind of i never really have i'm not one of these guys who's obsessed with it like some people are and um i'm sure it's good it's good for people who enjoy it blah blah, blah. whatever i'm not i'm not i'm not i look i'm not just not i'm not an expert okay anyway i i said to smith like how high are you right now out of 10 and he was like <laughs> oh about like 11 about six <laughs> four six or seven and so he was pretty high um, so he was like, let's go to this Amsterdam cafe, which is this place where they all smoke weed. Right. They were like, sure, let's go. And so on the way, you know, I had a few puffs of his, um, vape pen. His weed, weed vape pen. Yeah. And so did everyone else. And so we were all having like a little bit of a, we were all getting a little bit high. And we went to this, um, this Amsterdam cafe and it was like, it was a shop that was just it, full of bongs on one side of the room. Like, like right. a, like a bong like, collection. Were like, like, like shishas and stuff. Yeah. They had, and they like were those all... pucks and, and everything. It looked like a glass dildo fucking wall. Hey, have, you, have you ever tried a, a shisha though? It, they're nice, man. They're they're really good. Are you they like, like forty cigarettes in one breath no, or something? No, no it, it's not. It's like a it's like a tobacco. It's like a scented or flavored tobacco puck that you put. And it's at the really top. cool because it's water filtered, so it's, it's yeah, they're great. They're it's, very relaxed. It's nice. It's really nice. It's like it's it's. It kind of it it feels a bit like vaping actually. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very similar. But it's like this huge, gigantic, uh, like Middle Eastern apparatus instead of uh, you know just a little trendy pen or whatever. And the guy comes and puts the little disc. Yeah, what, he puts what that flavor little, would you like? little thing like, on. And, apricot, yeah. and he goes bonk and puts a little disc on and starts it going, and away you go. It's good. Yeah, and it makes a cool sound when you when you take like a like a, a hit from it. it goes like. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, you'd like it, I think, Lewis. You'd like it. The whole atmosphere is really nice too. You sit in a room like there's instead of tables and stuff, they just got pillows like on the ground. You just like chill out and have. You know, some falafel and well, I mean, I heard they were incredibly, incredibly <laughs> unhealthy. Like I heard they were like way worse than cigarettes. Oh, like, come on, like, there's nothing worse than cigarettes. Yeah, like, the geez. shit that they put in cigarettes, fuck me, like tar and everything in there. Like it's okay. Uh, it's well, awful. I don't know. I'm not an expert, but I'm 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 a my body's a temple, boys. You know, so yeah, a little cheeky vape once once in a while is okay, but I don't want to like fucking smoke on a hooker or anything. Jesus, okay. um, a hookah. I don't know what it's how it's pronounced. Yeah. Uh, so, anywho, uh, we went to this place, and it was just full of people, clearly very, very stoned, very, very chilled out people, right. who were all very, you know, all the all of them were on their phones, okay, yeah. clearly watching some something from like um, r slash mildly interesting or whatever. All right. And so we got we got stoned, and then we went to this fucking restaurant. It was it was nice. Um, we went. To what restaurant of- did you go to? McDonald's. What'd you get? Thirty chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> well man oh, if you're gonna smoke weed that's what you gotta follow up with you gotta you gotta get like 20 cheeseburgers for 99 cent cheeseburgers or something like we basically had like the most stoner conversation ever you know uh, you know like i think at one point I, I i remember a couple of things one thing one thing that i said was lobster because smith would like macaroni cheese with lobster and it's a classic american thing right right um i said Lobster is prawn steak. 
oh, and everyone was like, oh my God, that's the most profound thing in the world. Everyone thought that was the most profound thing oh, anyone had ever said. Right. right. Um, I know that was the kind of state we were in. We, it Wait, was and this was, you guys were, you guys were, were smoking a vape smithy's vape that was given to him yeah that had weed juice in it this is the story yes <laughs> right <laughs> that's that's literally it and gotcha. are you high right now no i'm not okay. i'm not very well right now because of flipping flying back you know i always get like airplane colds right so, you're you like know, george costanza a... you know that you you remind <laughs> me of george costanza <laughs> <laughs> saying inappropriate things to people that, that Jerry yeah. would be like, George, you can't talk to them like that. I told him, I told him I don't like his face and he's got an old girlfriend. That's you. Your, re- <laughs> your relationship like with the gym guy. <laughs> yeah, your that's, awkward that's... silences go into a, 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 a place to smoke weed. It's all very, very Costanza. It's right out of his playbook. It is playbook. very, very Costanza. It's, it's yeah. very, it's very, very true. You know what? I was I was thinking the other day. This is when I saw a, a tweet that Sips has made. This is a complete change of subject, but it really made me laugh because we do this quite often on the podcast. I've noticed what is our references are tragically sort of out of date. So you made a reference <laughs> to Smithy. I think it was something he was wearing, and yeah. you referred to him as Punky Brewster. <laughs> right. So that was a show that uh. aired in like the the mid to late eighties, and yeah. I instantly knew what you meant. But I'm thinking. Like ninety hey, percent of the people who watch the Smithy girl, stuff, the girl that played Punky Brewster was Blossom, though, right? No, or did that they was just Soleil look... Moon Fry was the girl who played Punky Brewster, and Blossom oh, okay. was played by Wait, don't tell me, Jesus, what was her name? Renee Russo. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Renee Russo. Mayim Bialik. They look similar, though, right? They look. They no, look... they're really oh, completely oh. different. Mayim Bialik oh, okay. is the girl. She's in Third Rock from the Sun. She's Never the same age then. as Soleil Moon Fry. Soleil Moon Fry is is beautiful. Like she's a beautiful woman. Um, but the one that plays Blossom? No, the one that plays Punky Brewster. Like if you look at a picture oh, of her now, punk- she she's forty. She's like she's she's born. She's only okay, slightly me- older than me. She is she is gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. Me and be like not so much. But she's she's nice. But she's not like a looker, you know. Okay, Punky Brewster now twenty sixteen images. Oh yeah, no, that's not punk. She looks a bit like Alanis Morissette, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She has that Alanis Morissette look. But I don't hate her. Yeah, like I hate Alanis Morissette. What is she recently pregnant? There's lots of pictures here of her pregnant. Oh damn! Well, that's over. Yeah. She got four kids. <laughs> Wow. That's Good. why there's so many pictures of her pregnant. It's hard to take a picture of her when she's not fucking pregnant. Jesus Christ. I think it's interesting. Like, I was watching The Simpsons with, I know we talk about The Simpsons a lot, but I was watching it the other day with my kids, and there were a number of references in it that, I, I mean, I know my kids won't get them, but I think most people who aren't in their late 30s or 40s would even get. Like, I remember watching them at the time and being confused. Like, references to Steve Allen. Like, Steve yeah. Allen was, was uh, you know, a funny, like, he was a comedian in the 70s. And- I know, yeah. Well, I mean, Simpson has, like, tons of references to, like, Reagan and Nixon and, like, yeah. all these, like, old-ass and, and, presidents like stuff, that... Like, but that's because the guys that were making the show were, like, our age now. And they exactly, were like, what's yeah. funny? Oh, yeah, Steve Allen. Yeah, let's joke about Steve Allen, Mad Magazine, ALF. Like, there were jokes about <laughs> ALF. ALF. Nobody's yeah. seen ALF in, like, 20 years. Oh, like, I it, used to watch ALF all the time, though. I fucking love that show. It was my, really good. I know good. my kids would watch it now. I guarantee you they would watch ALF now, even though it's fucking awful. But I know they'd yeah. watch it. But there's, like, certain shows that did really well over here. Like, my wife says that, like, Roseanne used to be on all the time over here. It was, yeah, like, that's it was a great pretty show, popular. Though. Uh, like the Cosby show, but I guess the Cosby show is pretty popular, like more or less everywhere. It was everywhere. huge. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, yeah. And um, and Frasier as well. She said Frasier was just like super big over here too. Yeah, that yeah. was big. And Friends. Friends was really yeah, big Friends over here. Was, Friends was but Seinfeld, not so much. Seinfeld nah. was huge in North America, but yeah. not not so much in the UK. People didn't like it. It was too, too American. Honestly, too, too American, American yeah. I think. Too New I don't know, York-y. I would have thought that Friends would have been as well. Friends was like fucking no, ultra-American. No, it's it like just... elevated music comedy. It's like super, super appealing. Like, no, you don't even really notice it's there. It's just... My sister, by the way, is fucking obsessed with Friends. Like, she knows, she's seen every episode probably like a hundred times. Knows really? the show inside. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Friends? Like, it's okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's I, not I, offensive. If it's on, sometimes it, it'll occasionally make me laugh, but I would never, like, follow it religiously. No. Friends and Seinfeld and shows like that are just, 
still in like massive syndication in yeah, the US. Yeah. They're like on TV all the fucking time. Fresh Prince of Bel Air as well. Oh God. But, but do you I mean, know what? I do you know what? A lot of people liked Friends that you wouldn't have thought would like it. Because to me, it, it and this is going to sound sexist, it always seemed like more of a, a sort of a show that girls would be super, super into. And, yeah. and you know, I mean, I, I thought that maybe you think that was unfair, but when my wife was at university, the guy in the next room from her, she remembers one time, she she was she was walking past his bedroom when he was watching Friends, and she could hear the title music, and you know the that bit. Yeah, he clapped along with it in his room, <laughs> and nice. I remember thinking, all right, he he wouldn't have done that with the door open. He would have been embarrassed if he clapped along to the theme of Friends. That's pretty good. Yeah. That was funny. I'd like it's weird. I remember, I, like I've probably said this like many times, but I remember like growing up on Thursday night, you had. It was it was it was crazy. Like primetime TV on a Thursday night. You had New Simpsons when Simpsons was like pretty good. Yeah. You had New Friends and then New Seinfeld. Like those three shows, huge shows, all with like new episodes on a Thursday night. Man, like if you went outside when those shows were on, it was like a ghost town. Like no everybody was inside watching TV, mm. like when those shows were on. It was and and nowadays, we're like I guess back that's to not back a thing. Well. That's not a thing now. Like being no. being in at a certain time to watch a show. You just watch it on catch up. Just record that's it. it. Yeah, or I guess stream. everybody just yeah, watches it like whenever. Like I barely watch any TV now. Like yeah. I, I just watch stuff on the on the internet like all the time now. Yeah, I do I do still watch regular TV with the kids. Like I'll just stick it on and we'll we'll watch something. So we will yeah, watch there were two like shows kids that we TV watched. Though, right? No, no, no. We they they've actually started to get an interest in non kids TV. Like the stuff really? that I, yeah, oh, stuff God. that I had no idea that they would like. For example, there's this show called it's called something like The Repair Shop. And it's this okay. really, really ultra gentle show. I guess it's to, it's towards dinner time or around just just post dinner time. It's for old people basically. It, I think it was on BBC Two. Right. And basically, there's this. It's a big setup. It's like all these shows. They have this house. It's got the repair shop on the outside. It's in a beautiful scenic area. It's like BBC stuff. And what happens is they've got like a guy who specializes in repairing clocks and a woman who specializes in restoring things and make but still making them look <laughs> yeah. old. There's a yeah. guy who's like a seamster and a guy who's a carpenter. And they're it sounds like, like oh, something Lewis would write. Right. This, this, they're, they're like this wa- <laughs> this vague very gently wacky band like one of them wears a funny hat Whoa. and people come in and they're like I've got this old clock that my grandfather left me it stopped working like oh we'll have a look at it and someone came in and said oh this was a, a piano stool that I used to sit on with my grandmother could you restore it like yeah sure the kids were fucking gripped and I was like kids what are you really this they were like, oh we love it we love it don't change the channel they watched the whole thing like oh, with man. rapt attention this guy has this old clock you could see him undoing it with a tiny screwdriver now oh here are the gears and the cogs these will be tricky but I'll do it and then they cut away to someone cutting up some fabric and they were just in seventh heaven they fucking loved it I was it's, really surprised it's weird because like because there's a like a four year difference between my two kids like my son wants I think my son would be up for watching different stuff now. Right. You know, like, I don't think he necessarily would just sit around watching kids TV all, all day. Like, he wants to watch stuff on YouTube. He's got this friend at school who's, like, obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy. So he comes home every day and he's like, hey, Dad, can I watch Five Nights at Freddy? I'm like, no, don't fucking watch that. Why? You don't want to watch that anyway. Oh, but my like, God. That we is can't so watch. weird. Because I know, I know. literally, there's a, there, was a da- there was a girl in my daughter's class. Again, so they were, like, seven. And she, her oldest sister would play the game with her yeah. friends and they, she would watch. That's it. Again, she was obsessed. I know. And she, she described the characters to my daughter. And I didn't know about this conversation. My daughter comes home with her, her little coloring book she's got with her, or, you know, like a sketchbook she's got with her. And I'm like, that, that's a character from Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm like, where the hell did you see that? She goes, oh, my, my friend told me about it. It was an amazing, like, this was, there was, she should be a fucking police sketch artist because she's never played the game, <laughs> but she knew. And I was like, that's exactly what so he looks like. The, what, it was that horrible fucking creepy bear from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that's like scares people and, and people scream or whatever. So, like, my son doesn't know what it is. He has no idea. Like, he's never seen any videos of it on YouTube or whatever. He just has this friend at school who's got an older brother who, like, talks about it all the time. So he comes to school and he talks about it all the time and he's seen it or whatever. So my so my son is like, oh, can I watch Five Nights at Freddy's? Like, no, no, you can't really watch Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, I don't even really know who's playing that game and stuff. And, like, you, you don't want to waste your time watching that anyway. Watch something else sort of thing. But then we is go it, to a toy is it, store. Is it, is it properly a scary thing or is it like a Goosebumps? Or is it I like have, a properly scary thing? I have I no mean, fucking idea, Have you idea, never seen honestly. the game? I, I well, know about the game, but I've never yeah, played exactly. it or I've seen anyone it. play it. I've 
I, really I mean, see I've, I've seen it. other people play it, and basically, you control the security cameras, and you have to try and you can close certain doors and turn on certain lights and stuff from your control desk, and all you can see is the cameras. And when you're like looking away, you'll look back, and the dolls moved because the the, the the gist is it's like what what was that? Uh, Chuck E. Cheese, right? It was the restaurant in the states, I think, and you'd go there for pizza, yeah. and they had these animatronics and stuff. So the, the gist is you're there to mind them over the weekend or whatever. Yeah. But a lot of other people have tried, and obviously they've failed. So you have to try and survive five nights at Freddy's restaurant without the dolls yeah. killing you, right? But well, it is genuinely scary. Is, it is genuinely scary. Like it's, if you, it's, it's, it's yeah, like, that, it's it's like a jump screamer, terrifying, like ah, kind of thing. They pop up and you die. Okay, so. but but listen, they have fucking toys of it now in in yeah, the I toy know. store. So yeah. like, so we go to the toy store and he sees this stuff. We're like, all right, you want to get something? You want maybe get like a transformer or something? Like you know, we we went, we took him to the toy store to to get him something because he right. had like some vouchers that he got for his birthday from like. This fucking aunt who lives in like Croatia or whatever. Um, and so we, we took him and we were like, you, you want to get like a Star Wars guy or, or something? And he's like, no, no, look, look what they have. Like what? I'm like looking around, there's like my little pony and stuff. And then I fucking see it. It's like this just stupid fucking bear from Five Nights at Freddy's. He's like, that's, that's Timber or, or whatever his name is. My friend told me all about him. He's the best. Can I get that? I was like, no. Don't fucking spend your money on... You don't even know what that is. You've never even seen it before. Like, why would you buy that? But he was, like, dead set on getting it. And then we had to, like, convince him to just, like, get something else. Or, or like, we took him upstairs in the toy store and we're like, oh, look at this stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm going to get that instead. It, it was is like, weird. That it's it, that so they, it weird. It appeals to them, yeah. Well, yeah, listen, yeah. No, but, 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 but I, I, I mean, I used to watch, like, when I was a kid, you know, Doctor Who was, was a scary thing. And there were certain things that, you know, you watched from behind the sofa kind of thing. And it was okay. Like a lot of kid stuff is gross or kind of spooky. And the Goosebumps books, I, I mean, I'm using them as the main example, I guess. But like, uh, is Five Nights at Freddy's, like, are we talking about like adult nerds buying these toys, but they're accidentally being put in the kids section? Or no, are these genuinely, I don't think like, so. I think these are, these are genuinely like kids things, I think. Okay. So is Five Nights at Freddy's supposed to be okay for kids to play like it or not? I I'm not sure. Question. I honestly, I don't know. And and it's weird, you know what? It? I'm never going to find out either because okay. I don't. I don't really care either. I just i I don't know how. It's like it, it, it's like the hype of something that gets kids obsessed with it. It's it's crazy. Like I don't it, know whether you're just being grumpy around it for the sake of being grumpy around it though, because like you're like a, a grumpy dad. I'm like that though sometimes. Like well, something like that a I, grumpy I, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. just feel like there's like better things that he could be into. Or, yeah, he and should like, be into Star Wars. <laughs> I mean. Watching, like, you know, Anakin getting, like, burned in a fire and killing children, well, you know. Not like, that. Oh, Maybe sure. not, not that specific part, like... And, like, Luke having his hand cut off and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Which is, like, pretty cool. Like, you know, it's, it's probably better than Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I guess there's fairly horrifying bits in Star Wars, though, yeah. like, for a kid. You know, mild horror. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should just fucking embrace Five no, Nights no, at Freddy's and it. get don't him into it. it. I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just subject him to all of the fucking screaming man children on YouTube who play <laughs> it and stuff and fucking buy him the toys and shit and let him go to school and talk about it. And maybe he can fucking enlist some other kids into it and, and stuff as well. That's for a little Five Nights good. at Freddy's cult. Hell yeah. It sounds, Why not? It sounds fantastic. I think yeah. you should just... That's the you problem. Know. You you can raise your kid as well as you like, but some other <laughs> yeah, that, piece it. of shit out there will raise their kid to be a real son of a bitch with no hope and your kid will befriend that person and your kid will be corrupted. That's yeah, it. to be like a corrupt, like a fell, my fell child. Like, <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. all thanks to, it's all thanks to this other kid's older brother who was obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy's, but no, I know, it, it's just interesting how how obsessed they can get about things yeah. that they they know literally nothing about. Like, uh, I guess they just like the idea of it, or maybe they like that you know they that their friend tells them about it or whatever. But yeah, it, it's such it a it's such a powerful thing that they want to like get like toys of it and stuff, and and they just don't know. You know, like he's never seen anything to do with it. Like, I I think he'd actually probably be a bit scared. Of oh it, yeah, uh, if he oh, watched terrified. it. Kids are but weird. He, the stuff they get into, it's it's weird. You can't really yeah, predict yeah, it's, it. It's yeah, it's really weird. But um, but like because there's a, a gap. My daughter is still very small. She's like yeah. 17 months old. So and she's just starting to now recognize characters like on you know CBBS or, yeah. or whatever. Um, so we generally still have that on all the time, sort of thing. Because 
she you know she can't really yeah watch they, anything they else shows so. her too much but yeah so my son like c- complains about it a little bit you know he's like oh fuck i don't want to watch it in the night garden or whatever but then when it's on he's just like yeah i mean my two are a little older so i've got one is five and a five and a bit and the other one is nearly eight so they're, they're a little closer like, they can play together now for hours perfectly happily and they can watch the same shows and stuff like that nice. they, you know the younger that's one kind of has to try and keep up a bit but i i think that's a good thing like it's good for her to to have to keep up, but yeah, the older yeah. the older one explains shit to her anyway, so it's like it's cool. Yeah, they do still sometimes watch. Like if if they've got the remote, they'll sometimes go to the baby channel, which is literally I don't know who the fuck makes this stuff. Some poor animator somewhere who's just like, oh god, so man, you poor animator, my ass. You you know how many fucking views this shit gets on YouTube? Like these people are minted making like baby shows and and huh. nursery rhymes yeah, and I stuff. Guess they fuck are. me, it's You're crazy. Right. You're right. It's just nuts. It's like those toy unboxing channels where all they do yeah. is buy a toy and just open the box and they get like 5 million views. More than that. Some of those have like fucking 200 million views. It's insane. It's just God. nuts. Yeah. But like but it's the it's I think it's the culture now like everybody's got an like an iPad or some sort of tablet at home and yeah. everybody uses them now to like you know just control their kids somewhat yeah. like if they need a minute to like do the dishes or you, they need to make a phone call or something. You just shove your kid on a tablet and say, "Oh, here, I hate that." Listen to, you see these people on the plane, rhymes. and they just stick yeah. their kid. Their kids are there, or any, any. I mean, I see people. They're getting in the car, and they the moment the kid gets in the car, they oh, iPad, iPad. And they're like, "Yeah." So there's two kids in the backseat with the iPad. When we go for a drive, we're listening to music, we're talking, and you know, we, we try to have a conversation. We don't just give them a fucking iPad. And the, the the thing is, they can go. Like my kids will go two, three hours in a car, no problem, because they've never had to be. Like, we, we've never gone for this whole, we better entertain them. If they act yeah. up, you just tell them to shut up and sit still. Like, I always say, I will stop this car and leave you on the side of the road. And they believe me. <laughs> yeah. And I would do no, it. We're, we're the same. We don't really we don't really have, like, anything that we, we hook them into sort of thing. But, like... I don't like it. Um, occasionally, like, if they're, you know, especially, like, when they're really young, right? Like, my daughter is still, like, really young. So, like, she wants to walk places now. Right. If she if she's got it in her mind that she's walking somewhere and you're trying to get her into like her her buggy or like into a car seat or something like that she, and she just fucking starts screaming, sometimes you have to have something. Oh yeah, you need something. Like for that. you need like a bartering tool. But luckily, it's never like a phone or an iPad or whatever. Usually, we just have like a snack or something that we yeah, bring along give them with some us. Food. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like and and sometimes it's like you know it, it it's it's like. It like grapes cut in half, <laughs> but we make it look more interesting by like putting it into like a container that's got like two lids and yeah, stuff like that. that so so then she's like, oh! like it just stops dead in her tracks. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, fucking yeah. kids! Like they're they're, they're, they're tricky funny. sometimes. They're funny, but you you do develop like lots of techniques and stuff. Oh yeah, like along the way. You know, you know that that's the other thing my kids like watching. Talking about about like behavior and stuff. You know, Super Nanny. Uh-huh. Do you remember that show? Yeah, they love it. Because my, my kids are both, like, genuinely, this isn't, I'm not bragging, I'm just being honest. They are so fucking well-behaved, it's ridiculous. My kids are incredibly well-behaved, mainly because I'm a, I'm a strict dad, right? And right. I, I watched Super Nanny before I had kids, and I was like, fuck yeah, these kids are going to get disciplined <laughs> to shit. Like, there's no fucking nice. around. These kids uh, are going to yeah. be well-behaved. And you see these parents, and they, they're so well-meaning. They're like, I don't want to tell them off because I don't want them to hate me. And you're like, geez, that, that's, I get that. That's like a natural reaction. Yeah. Or... I, I just want them to, you know, I, I'm worried that what, one day they'll grow up and they'll leave. That was another thing that one of the mums said, and she was very tearful. So she, like, babied her kids excessively because she she wanted to be useful to them. She had four kids. She knew she wasn't uh. going to have any more kids. And the idea, I mean, it was so wonderful for her having those kids. She loved it so much. She couldn't let go. And Super Nanny comes in. She's like, stop all this bullshit. Your kids are getting older. You've got to start treating them like that. And she was really crushed. But so my kids watch this. They're like, fascinated to see these badly behaved kids like there was this one kid they put her in the naughty step area she pulled this drawer out of this cupboard in the in the hallway and just smashed it to pieces like a barbarian on the Jeez. on the floor just smashed, yeah, just like that and super Daniel was like just let her do it and i was like i would be in there whipping that kid's ass if she did that oh but- my god yeah, there'd be no dinner, lo- locked in the garage, like yeah. everything. I'd be pissed. It was There's just, no way. it was something else. But she was like, don't raise your voice. I was like, geez, I've been doing it wrong all this time. Because I'll shout <laughs> at my kids if they fuck up. I'll be like, what, the, what are you doing? You know, like oh, my man. daughter the other we, day. We, we, never, we never need to raise our voices. Like, like my, my wife has the fucking death stare down pat. Oh, wow. Like, I wish they I had know. that. 
Like they fucking know. Like if if she gets pushed too far, or whatever, stare comes out, and even I'm like, oh, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom <laughs> for like two hours. I'm out of here, sort of thing. God. So that works, and also we do like the countdown. So like it's oh, yeah. it's like the the threat of some sort of punishment. Sort you don't of thing. even need so to say what you count. You just start to go right. I know. Five, I just start. I just start four. counting. Yeah. They just, they and sometimes panic. I do it from like huh? twenty, and and they just start going crazy. Yeah. Like if they're being too loud or something, I'm like. 19, 18. And yeah, then but just they do that like, thing Whoa. where they dance on the spot. Their feet are moving and they're just still like, ah, they don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's counting, oh, he's counting. They, they sort of run in circles. They Like, what What are we doing? How have we fucked up? we got to salvage this situation. Oh, it's like they're in an airplane seat plummeting towards the ground. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can face. thank me later, society. You can thank <laughs> yeah. me later. My kids are going to be, they're going to grow up and they're going to be great. Just or don't count really around unhinged. Them. It's the one <laughs> Just thing. Don't, don't count, count around. Yeah, it might trigger them, but otherwise. <laughs> oh be... my God, in the gym. They're just going to be like <laughs> <laughs> doing reps. <laughs> 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> 14. <laughs> They're just like fucking freaking out. Oh man. There's there's lots of cool techniques though. Like it, there's lots of there's lots of fun ways that you can you can be a parent and you can keep your kids on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Like through counting games. And bribery, corruption, but the, the fact that it, the similar, the, the same shit will m almost always work with different kids. Like they're all so uniform, out of the box. They're just like this cut and paste. Blip. Here's a person. Yeah. They're doing this. Oh, try this. Oh, that fucking worked. Who knew? It's like it's like a it's, everybody has the very similar model car. There may be some differences, but you know the mechanic can just be like, yeah, just tweak the carburetor. Yeah, that actually did work. Like kids are pretty straightforward. You just yeah, need to they, learn those techniques. It's kind of funny. Yeah, man. I have no time for other people's kids though. Oh, like, fuck that noise. I don't. I don't want to fucking know. Like they come up and they talk to me, so I'm just like, whatever. I'm, I, I'm not you just put you. the hand out. No, yeah, not don't mine. Even. Not interested. Where's Where's your mother, Jimmy? Go, <laughs> go tell somebody who gives a shit, Jimmy. It's not me. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I, my kids would love to have more playdates, but I'm like, oh, geez, I'd have to have someone else's kid around. Oh, here. those are fucking awkward. I I took my my son to a birthday party, and uh, this woman was like, oh, you know, your your son and my son, they they get on so well. It's so sweet, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, I know it really is like watching them play and stuff. And she's like, you know, uh, we should set up a play date one time. I was like, um, uh, we, we have leprosy. Oh God. We're, we're we busy. Have, we have leprosy. Oh, Don't come around. Oh yeah. geez. I mean, we are busy. Like <laughs> we have a lot of shit to do. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's awkward. Like, it is like tough. and there's no, there's no, there's not really any way to make it not awkward either. Because yeah. the only thing you you have in common with this person that you know of is that you've both created life, and and now you're sustaining that that life that you created. <laughs> like, you know, they might be into some really weird shit. Like, they might have musical taste that really offends you, Ugh. or maybe you know, they might be racist and you don't know yeah. it yet and stuff. Like, there's. There's lots of risks involved with the dates, tough. I think. And then they have to come around to pick up their kid and they're in your house, this person you barely know, and they're like nosing yeah. around, judging your house. You're like, geez. I hate that too. You got to tidy up a little bit too because you Ugh. don't want them to think that you're slovenly. But yeah. like, you know, you're just like... When you have a house that's filled with kids, like it's not, it's 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 not a a beautifully clean. It's gonna organized be messy. House, There's gonna be shit it? everywhere. Yeah, that's it's it. a dump. Yeah, yeah, it's not a dump. Lewis. It's not a Come dump. On. It's just lived in by Man, people. Fucking spend a day in my shoes and then call your house a dump, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Man. You're so sassy. I quite like this new I sassy list. I wouldn't want to get into your shoes because they're probably full of fucking baby sick. He Jesus doesn't say anything Christ. for ten minutes. He's like, it's a dump. Just hey, that's one thing that I'm we're, I'm lucky. I don't know about you, Flax. But my kids are not sickly. Like they don't barf. Like, no, they they're never not, have. not too much. Barely at all. I mean, but yeah. if it happens, it's rare. They're not. I mean, yeah. they do get sniffles and things. And the thing yeah, is, yeah, when my but... kids are sick, they go into this sort of sort of cocoon. They just crawl into bed and just lie there for two days, and then they're fine. Like that's their sickness. Yeah. So, like yeah. I, I got the same thing they had, and I was laid up for a week, like feeling like fucking death. And they were just like, yeah, just give me a couple of days. I'll just uh, rest this off, stick the telly on. They just lie there in bed completely still for like some two days. Kids, boom, ready. Some kids are really Ralphy though, like yeah. projectile, like, Ugh. you know, drop of a hat sort of thing. But That luckily, happens that's... at my daughter's school because the younger one, um, she, uh, she, she'll come home and she'll say, Joseph was sick today. I was like, really? She was like, I, I was like, what, you mean he wasn't in school? No, he was sick in the classroom. 
I was like, wow, okay. And she said, yeah. And he was sick with another boy. And I was like, oh my <laughs> God. Like this kid, Man. I can just imagine him standing there just and like, he was sick with the teacher. Sick with another kid. I was like, and what did the other kid the... do? Oh, he was okay. Dutch it, lady. it was only his shoe. I was like, so he's sick with another kid's shoe? Yeah, so he had to walk around barefoot for the rest of the, the school day. But he, but <laughs> Man, he was okay. it's no joke being sick at school though. I remember one time when I was, I, I must have been 11 or 12. We had a school that in the suburbs, the suburbs like, exploded right in right. the 80s yeah uh, like they just they they sprawled and sprawled and sprawled and sprawled so what happened was in in a lot of the schools in the suburbs was um they have like a whole new development of houses but you're talking like hundreds of houses right, right. and then all of a sudden the minute they were done boom like all the they would fill up with people right and all those people were mostly families with kids and those kids would have to go to school right but, but the schools couldn't really accommodate for them uh, because the schools were like a set size yeah. designed, designed for the population of the suburbs at the time it was built, which is like 15 years before this and stuff. So what happened was we had a lot of like uh, like portables, like, you know, those classes, like they, they're like uh, like mobile classes almost. They, they were just like these boxes and like a big truck could just like bring them in and set them up like outside of the school, like in a field. So we had tons of these like portable classes. Uh, like we must've had like 10 or 15 of them. And they were, they were like, they were classrooms, but they, you just had to walk outside to them and they had like these little steps and go up into them. And they were just these boxes like raised up off the ground um, that had electricity and everything in them and stuff as well. But they were like, they were like really sort of isolated, uh, like contained like little units. So, and there was like 30 people in my class. And one day my friend Mike got sick in class, okay? And he, he barfed all over the floor. It was really, really gross. And it stunk super bad. And they had to come in. They had to evacuate the, the portable that we were in. And we had to go like finish our lesson in another class. Um, and they had to like decontaminate the portable. And they had to put some stuff down. And I'm not even joking for the rest of the, rest of the year. I think the rest of the time I was at that school, that particular portable just stunk of barf. It was Jesus. unbelievable. It was overwhelming. Like I felt like puking every time I went into it. And I had like three classes in that thing like every day. And it was the worst. Like you'd, you'd get used to it after you were in it for a while. But then if you went outside like to go to the bathroom or something and then you came back, it would hit you all over again. It was like getting hit repeatedly by a train 50 times throughout the day. It was, oh, it was awful. God, it was so bad. I don't know what what happens. Like maybe it's like the like the stomach acid or something just gets stuck in the oh, in the fibers of the carpet. Or, it's uh, I don't so know, bad. but they they, they what can't they get do rid of that smell. Is, uh, they remove the carpet tiles that the kids have been sick on and they just bin them. They're just gone. Like oh they have a, the storeroom full of carpet tiles. When the kids are sick, they just like cut the carpet tiles out. Whoosh, they're gone. Put a new one down. That's it. Because otherwise the stink never leaves. And kids are sick Man, all the time. Right. All the time. <laughs> Thinking back, portables were fucking hilarious. Like we we had this guy called JJ. <laughs> he was like he. I, I'm not even joking. We were like 12. Dude was like 20. Okay, he <laughs> failed school like over and over and over <laughs> again. Okay, and he was just like lingering around like like a stale old fart. He was he was much older than us, and he was really fucking funny. Like, and if you had a class with him. He was super disruptive. He would like make fun of like teachers and stuff. And I remember this one time we were in class and we were in, in a portable and he was like, miss, miss, can I, I need to go to the bathroom really bad. It's an emergency. Can I go to the bathroom? And she's like, yeah, okay, JJ, go to the bathroom. And because there's no bathrooms in these portables, right? So you'd have to leave the portable, go outside, go into the school building to go to the bathroom. Hmm. So he leaves the portable, <laughs> okay, <laughs> to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And we look, we look outside, like in, in, in like to the soccer field, and fucking JJ is just like pegging it, like running around the soccer field, like <laughs> screaming, like arms like flailing in the air, running around and stuff. And like everybody's just sort of like stifling a laugh. I'm just like, oh God, thank God, JJ's outside, like running around and stuff. And the, the teacher's still trying to teach and everything. And everybody's like, oh God, like laughing. And then, uh, and then somebody just bursts out laughing. Like it was just too much trying to like contain the laughter. And then everybody's laughing. The teacher's like, what's going on? What's going on? And like, JJ's outside. <laughs> she looks outside. Fucking JJ's still going for it. Just running around. Like he's just like, oh, fuck this oh, class. Man. I'm just going to run around. <laughs> oh, fuck. It was so funny. He got so far into the school system. He already knew the punishments don't mean shit. <laughs> like expelling him at this shit. point would be a mercy. He was like, do it. Oh, do what you fuck, want. It was so funny. <laughs> just sort of running around and stuff. Oh, man. Just wants the sweet release of expulsion. <laughs>
Oh uh, shit! Uh, I love moments like that at school. You yeah. know, like those moments when somebody would make would would say something really funny, and you're not meant to laugh. And you, you're you're trying to like <laughs> trying to like keep it under wraps, but you can't. Ah, uh, shit! That was really good. Uh, fucking JJ, man. I wonder I mean, what he's I mean, up to now. He's JJ. probably in jail. He's probably he's homeless be or in jail. jail yeah. yeah. Fucking hell! Holy you don't shit. come back school's from that. A, school's a big part of our kind of upbringing, and I think I think I'd say it was quite interesting to think about when. So it's one of the reasons I think I liked reading Harry Potter, right, back in the day. It was because um, it was set at school and it felt like you, it had all those kind of schooly memories and things. It, it sort of it reminded you a lot of the good times of being at school. Um, but you did you used to have to wear a uniform and stuff at school? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We never had proper, any of that. Proper smart blazer and a uh, little cap, some shorts, you know. Yeah, my uniform was a Chicago Bulls starter jacket with... Uh, <laughs> Chicago nice. Bulls starter baseball cap and um, <laughs> Nike Airs. <laughs> that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. That, that was we, we didn't have uniforms. We were just like we were allowed to wear whatever. Did they still have the cane when you were at school, P Flex? Um, yes. When I started primary school, um, that was uh, they were phasing out the cane around then. So this was like <laughs> eight, eight, eighty-five. Out. They were, and our, the headmaster, <laughs> Mr. Laird. <laughs> Um, this we're was at my phase primary school. We're phasing it out. He brought like we were. So there were three of us. And we're, I can't remember what we we're doing. We we're fighting or something. We're transitioning from the cane to the slipper. It's more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so we we went in and he had it up on his wall. On like it was like above his desk. There was like these two hooks and his cane was resting in there like a gun. Right, like you know the way hunters have a rifle over there. Mm-hmm. Sort of desk. So he had this cane there. He said, "Boys, I have not had to use that cane." For five years, do not make me use it now. We were like, oh my God, he's going to fucking beat us to death with the cane. So we were all like, yes, sir, we won't do it again. Uh, But by the time I got to secondary school, the cane was gone. And the teachers were obviously pretty salty about this because it was a boys' school and they thought whipping us was about the only thing that that really stopped boys just doing whatever they wanted. Uh, So they just took to throwing things at us instead. Like they'd throw chalk, board rubbers, stuff like that. Now, interestingly enough, I was talking about when I went to Bournemouth school, which was, the, which was the name for the school, Bournemouth School. It's like the least thought has gone into that name for a school. It is literally called Bournemouth School. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's just like a total afterthought. Oh, shit, we didn't name the yeah, school. Yeah, it's just like, what, should we, what are we going to call this school? It's in Bournemouth. Let's just call it Bournemouth School. So uh, there was a kid who, uh, I say kid, he's, he's, he's not that young, he emailed me about a month ago saying, I went to the same school as you. He was a lot younger than me. He was there in the 2000s. And he was saying to me, like, there were teachers that taught me that were still at that school. There was a guy there, Mr. Hawkins, who not only taught me and this kid recently, he taught my dad and my uncle when they were at that school. So he had been there for fucking 50 years or something stupid like that, teaching at that one school, which was kind of insane. But they still threw chalk and board rubbers at people. And there were teachers that were still teaching there that taught when I was there, when I was 11, back in the 80s. They were still teaching at that school and still chucking shit at kids. I mean, honestly, if you did some kind of investigation into Bournemouth school, you'd be like, this school is like 50 years out of date. Why are they still chucking board rubbers at kids? But they did. Oh, man. I I, I read an obituary for one of my teachers, my primary school teachers. Right. Uh, like, it was a couple of years ago. So, like, somebody I went to school with sent it to me. And they were like, hey, fuck you. You'll, you'll never believe it. Like, this guy, he passed away. And I read it. And I was like, oh, shit. And, like, you know, you, you read about this. You know, he was my teacher for, like, a whole year. Yeah. And, um, man, the memories just came flooding back. It was crazy. Yeah. And then I, I sort of remembered that, like, it wasn't really that great. <laughs> like, he, <wasn't, laughs> he was kind of mean-spirited and yeah. stuff like that. So it was like, I wasn't, like, actually upset or anything. But it was just kind of weird to read that, like, you know, somebody somebody you knew and you spent some time with or whatever had passed away. But yeah, um, it, it's weird, too, because, like, I found out later on, like, people that I'd gone to school with. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever had this, but, like, I was talking to, a, like, a friend of mine the other day, and I was like, oh, whatever fucking happened to, to this, to Corey? He's like, fuck, Corey's dead, man. What? Really? He's like, yeah, he fucking died in a car crash, like, three years ago. What? I couldn't believe oh, it. Man. And it's it's just, like, completely, you you lose touch with these people. Like, do they, they just disappear into this, like, time vacuum where you just assume that they're still doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, like, that that where you left them off. And then... You know, you find out all these people have, have obviously moved on with their lives. Like a lot of people get married, have kids, move away from the place that you used to live in and stuff, myself included. But 
you know, it was really shocking to hear that like this guy that I, I kind of knew and kind of hung out with from time to time, just like I'd completely lost all touch with him. I didn't know what he was up to or anything. And then he just, he, he died. died in a car crash. Yeah, it's, it's, weird when, it's weird when you hear about how much people's lives have changed that you knew a long time ago, but it's also kind of weird and kind of scary when you know that someone that you knew like 30 years ago is still doing the same thing that they were. Like they, their life has not changed yeah. in the whole time that you've been living and doing all this different stuff. You look back and you're like, yeah. wow, you're still doing that? Yeah, yeah. Still, Even now, like you're still doing that? Like, yeah, <laughs> Still teaching still at the same it. school, like, doing wow. the same, probably wearing the same fucking clothes the same cardigan sweater and shit that they were wearing back then too like it, yeah. it probably hasn't changed much yeah it's nuts but like your life you you sort of like settle into a life in 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 your in your midlife i guess right mm. and so I like guess. when we I were mean... when we were kids these teachers were probably just like pushing 30 or whatever and then you know if they if they didn't want to move on and get another job or whatever you know and that was their career and they were there then odds are they're probably still there and they're probably going to retire uh, from yeah, there doing yeah. the same thing. It's it's nuts to think, isn't it? I just, yeah. I'm not sure that people like the current generation that's working will really live that way. I don't think people do that as much now. I mean, I know my mom and my dad are always saying that the, the whole job for life thing is kind of gone. I mean, that, that doesn't Every, exist yeah, anymore. I, I think everybody's just going to be a YouTuber or a streamer <laughs> or, God. you know, an Instagram God or whatever. And, and yeah. Nobody wants, they're like a lot of these like jobs, like teaching, like nursing and stuff. Like nobody wants to fucking do those jobs anymore. Yeah, like they, I think a lot of employment is more transitory and kind of, yeah. I mean, you know, the zero hour contracts and pe people, a lot of be, people being self-employed. And I just think, yeah, I think people are being a bit less stuck in the same place. But the weird thing is yeah. it's mm. easy to keep in touch with people because of all, you know, your Facebooks and emails and stuff. So you kind of have a better idea of what everybody's doing. But everybody's yeah, but kinda... man, think about it. Like, people must think that of us to some point now. Like, a lot of people would have watched, like, Lewis and Simon playing Minecraft and stuff when they were, like, 13. And now that they're, like, 19, they might come back and be like, fuck, they're still doing YouTube stuff. I can't <laughs> believe it. I can't, yeah. All this time, is, I've got hair all over my dick now. I didn't have any back then. <laughs> a lot's changed for me. And these guys are still doing the same <laughs> shit. Can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm totally into vaping and choking now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I've changed a lot. I had yeah. a whole ordeal where I survived a plane crash and made my way through the <laughs> some, Amazon some forest. I get out, I it. load up YouTube, and there's Lewis and Simon playing Minecraft again. Jeez, it's nothing changes. Oh, oh man. man, shit. I'm in Bristol next week, you know. I'm in I'm in Bristol oh, next week. I'm coming okay, down so on Monday. Okay, so we'll record the, nice. the, the podcast from Bristol next week. Yeah. We could be on the road. Um, that'll be sweet. I'm looking forward to that. Let's have a... Have we got a bodega? We have a bodega. <laughs> a bodega? A bodega? We do. The bodega? The bodega? We do. It's a long one. It's a long one, It's apparently. a two and a half pager. <sighs> okay. Mm. They're, norm they're normally the two ride. pages. I try to keep oh. them to two pages, which is kind of Let tricky, but I've, I've made it two and a half. Let me mm -hmm. adjust myself slightly here. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Bodega. I'm ready. Part 19. What about 19 Areno? How about... Adding Areno to okay, the end. Okay, 19 of... Areno. Sweet. Kytos had been born, for want of a better word, on the planet Sigil, at the same time as all the other Sigilese beings in the galaxy. All the Sigilese that had ever been or would ever be were created then, in a single moment, fully formed and conscious. One moment the universe wasn't there, the next it was, and the Sigilese were too. All their houses, roads, a sewer system, socialized medicine, and education, and really good internet. It was like Sweden suddenly existing. It was this infinitely unlikely double event that led the Sigilese to believe that they were special, extremely special. So special, in fact, that their creation was even less likely than the creation of the universe itself. Imagine a cake suddenly popping into existence out of nothing. That's pretty unlikely. Now imagine that same cake popping into existence, covered in icing and sprinkles and the words good luck and your new job, Steve, love mum, written on it. That's even less likely. The Sigilese were the icing on the cake and they knew it. This also asked some pretty big questions. For example, what the flav? This was a common question among scientists when confronted with the Sigilese problem. <laughs> if the universe kind of made sense, the Sigilese really, really didn't, and it caused a huge rift in the scientific community that lingered to this day. Some concluded that the Sigilese creation story was a myth, that they just happened to be one of the oldest civilizations around, but carbon dating of early Sigilese artifacts proved it. 
they were as old as the universe, to the nanosecond in fact. Because of their self-appointed status as the most improbable and therefore most important race around, the Sigilees were almost insufferable in their egotism. Some people were proud to be tall or strong, some were proud of their race's grand history of conquest or exploration. The Sigilees just figured that their creation alone was much more than anything anyone else could really come up with, so they paraded around wearing jewellery older than some people's solar systems. Some of them even had pairs of jeans older than people's galaxies. If you tried to reminisce near a Sigilese, you'd better be prepared to have your anecdote trumped into the next dimension. Naturally, many people believe the Sigilese to be proof of the existence of a divine creator. I mean, come on, they would say. If that's not proof, then what the Flav would be? And they were kind of right. It was nuts. But the Sigilese did not believe in God. The idea that there was something out there even fancier than them was just ridiculous. And the idea that God would create a race of people who didn't believe in him at all sealed the deal for many scientists. This was just one of those weirdo things that happens in an infinite universe. End of story. Kytos was approximately 13 billion years old. He'd done everything he ever needed to do, satisfied every desire, and achieved more than any non sigilese being could ever achieve. The list was so long it would take around a billion years just to read it. Kytos, of course, had spent a billion years, around five billion years ago, running through all the things he'd ever done and recording this on a series of long-life crystal storage devices. But the crystals had decayed around a billion years later, and he just couldn't be flaved to start again. He'd also realized <laughs> no non sigilese would ever live long enough to read even 1% of what he'd written down, so what was the point? And so, like all old people, Kytos had started volunteering a lot. He had the free time, he didn't need money since his bank account had 13 billion years worth of interest in it, and his kids were so grown up they were older than 90% of the known universe. When that young pup Bodega had approached him asking for help, Kytos had said yes instantly, even though what Bodega had asked him was so trivial to Kytos that it barely deserved his attention. The late era Kytos turned no friend down, no matter the request. It was hard enough to make friends anyway when you knew you'd outlived them by billions of years, so he clung to the ones he did have. As requested, Kytos parked in his unbelievably cool ship in Krem Slum Dump's home system, Gurk, in orbit around the lush green Gurk 1. Krem wasn't home, but Majesta <laughs> was, and Kytos was the one who had introduced her to Bodega. He was here to clear the air between the two errant lovers, since it was too dangerous for Bodega to come to Gurk himself. Kytos reached out with his mind, knowing Majesta would hear his thoughts. Within minutes, a sleek blue vessel span up gracefully from the planet below and positioned itself alongside Kytos' ship. Majesta materialized on his bridge a moment later. You don't need the ship, do you? He asked her. No, of course not, but I like the ceremony of it, she said, looking around and smiling. Kytos admired her perfect beauty. She was tall, yet delicate. Her hair was so thick it looked like a few dozen birds could easily nest in it. Her breasts and buttocks seemed locked in a battle to outdo one another, and her face was so perfect it was hard to look directly at it. Warm and loving, but also aloof and haughty. When she smiled, it seemed that no other achievement was worth striving towards. Kytos had long ago given up on love. He'd had trillions of lovers, but Majesta? She was something else. Naturally, Kytos would wait until after Bodega had died before making a move, and he'd wait a good few millennia after that just to be polite. Do your psychic powers work on me? asked Kytos playfully. He knew full well that Sigilee's minds were impenetrable. Only when you want them to, she said distractedly. I'm here because, began Kytos, but Benjesta silenced him, pressing a perfect finger to his lips. I know. Bodega's mind is open to me and I sense his every thought and every action, unfortunately. He does love you, doesn't he? asked Kytos. Majesta began walking around Kytos' ship, running her hand over its ridiculously ergonomic surfaces. Kytos, you're older than I am, but we share something. A curiosity that extends beyond our powers, or in your case, your longevity. Bodega loves me, of course, but he's very confused. He is, and I am too, actually, said Kytos, frowning. Tam was a mistake. Our child wasn't. Bodega didn't want children, and I did. What about Krem? asked Kytos. I'm seeing where that goes for now. Bodega sees people through their actions, as most do. I don't. She stood with her back to Kytos, staring at Gurk 1 through the viewport. I know every facet of someone's personality the moment I meet them. Every lie they tell themselves, all the things they regret and the things they don't, but should. For a long time, I held off reading Bodega's mind because I wanted to experience love the way others do. But eventually I became curious. One night while he slept, I journeyed into Bodega's mind and what I found was, well, it scared me. What was it? Asked Kytos, genuinely intrigued for the first time in around 15,000 years. That's private, said Majesta, admonishing Kytos with the gentlest of glances that still crushed his spirit more deeply than the time he'd accidentally landed his ship on a Dildonian school bus. <laughs> <laughs> I must know, he said, taking a half step forwards. I will not tell you, save to say that the universe and Bodega have much in common. 
I knew that the more time I spent with Bodega, the more I'd become lost in his complexities. I wanted to spend time with more simple men, to enjoy their lack of depth. That seems awfully unfair, said Kaitos, sitting down in his chair and tapping in a new course. You're leaving, asked Majesta. I came here for my friend, to ask why. That's what he'd requested, just that. Ask her why, said Kaitos, turning in his seat to face Majesta. Looking up at her this way made her seem so imperious and alluring that Kaitos decided to shave a millennia or two off his polite waiting time. I asked why, and the answer I will return with is that Bodega is too much for you. You can't handle that man, he said. Majesta's face contorted into something like anger for a moment, so subtle that Kaitos almost missed it. She vanished from the bridge, and her ship blasted back towards the planet's surface. Kaitos would return to Bodega with a message. He would tell Bodega that, eventually, she would be his again. No woman can resist a man she cannot change. The end. Nice. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Lewis's string of reactions. <laughs> oh my god. That was a good one, man. That was really good. I like that a lot. It's excellent. Thank you very much, Pflex. My pleasure. Ah. Oh, okay. With that. We're going to end the Travels podcast here. Thank you for listening, everyone. See you next week. Peace. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.